Imagine stepping into a frozen forest at midnight, where the cold slices through every crack of every cabin, where the temperature drops so fast that even thick log walls shudder like living things. Yet one lonely cabin on that ridge stays warm actually warm because its owner, a quiet mechanical engineer named Elias Burke, built something so strange that even seasoned homesteaders laughed at him, until the night they watched smoke stop coming from his chimney while his window stayed fogged with heat from the inside, and that bizarre sight became the first clue that the man had solved a problem nobody else even believed could be solved. Most men relied on wood stoves that roared bright for three hours and faded to nothing by dawn, leaving the cabin to fall back into the brutal five degrees Fahrenheit mountain air. But Elias hated that nightly cycle of shiver sleep dash wake dash up dash and dash reload dash the dash stove. So instead of adding more firewood or building a bigger stove, he turned to something everyone in town called ridiculous. He buried a massive water tank under his cabin floor and piped his stove's heat into it, claiming that water could hold more heat than stone, brick or steel which sounded like nonsense to the old-timers who believed only in roaring flames and glowing iron. But water has a secret. A secret engineers know well, it stores heat like a battery, far more than rock and far slower to lose it, and when Elias explained this, people shook their heads, telling him that all he would do was make a big underground bathtub, nothing more. But Elias wasn't chasing a trend or a trick, he was chasing a simple truth if you heat a 400-gallon tank of water to even 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it will release that heat steadily, silently, predictably, hour after hour, long after any wood flame dies out. He dug the pit by hand, twelve feet long, six feet wide, nearly five feet deep, lining the edges with clay, sand, and a thick wrap of stone dust that acted like primitive insulation, then lowered the steel tank in place, and that tangled when it first settled into the earth would soon become the beating heart of a heating system no one had ever seen in those mountains. The first twist came when he installed the heat exchange coil, a loop of black iron pipe that ran from the back of his stove, down through the floor, wrapped around the tank like a serpent, and climbed back into the cabin, creating a closed loop that captured the stove's waste heat and fed it into the buried tank, turning every minute of burning wood into stored warmth instead of disappearing smoke. The second twist arrived when winter hit full force, and on the coldest night of the season, when every cabin glowed with frantic firelight, people noticed that Ilias's chimney had stopped smoking entirely by 10 p.m., yet by sunrise, his windows were still fogged thick and when he opened his door, the warm air spilled out in a wave so dense it looked like invisible steam rolling across the snow. People demanded an explanation. Elias simply said, The fire I lit last evening is still heating the cabin, not the flame you won't see a spark but the water. They didn't believe him, so he invited them inside. And that was the moment the mocking stopped because inside that cabin was a gentle, even heat knot, the harsh heat of a roaring stove, but a soft, quiet warmth that came from the floor, the walls, and the air itself like the whole cabin had become a low-temperature radiator powered by a fire that no longer existed. And that twist, that silent, steady heat, marked the beginning of a story that would change how frontier cabins handled winter forever. The secret, Elias insisted, wasn't magic, wasn't trickery, wasn't hidden machinery, it was simply physics, the kind most people never see because they re too used to flames and not used to what happens after flames die. And to understand his system, you had to understand why he chose water instead of stone, bricks, or sand. Because while those materials can store heat, they store very little compared to water, which can hold over four times more heat than rock by weight, and nearly ten times more by volume, making it the ultimate slow-release heater for any off-grid home. Each evening Elias burned his stove, normally letting the flames heat the iron coil behind it, and as the coil heated the water inside it, expanded rose and flowed into the buried tank, while cooler water from the tank rose back to the stove to be reheated, creating a natural pump-free thermosiphon loop, a circulation that engineers rely on even in modern hydronic systems yet no one in those mountains had ever seen it used for home heating. By the time his small fire burned down usually after only two to three hours the tank below his cabin had absor absorbed an enormous amount of heat enough to warm the surrounding soil and slowly radiate energy upward into the cabin floor all night long. And because the tank was buried deep, the cold winter air couldn't steal the heat quickly. The earth itself acted as a blanket, holding the warmth steady and slow. Two hours after the fire went out, most stoves would leave a cabin cooling fast, but Elias's cabin stayed stable, the temperature falling only a degree or two because the thermal mass below him was still full, still hot, still feeding energy upward, and that stability created a comfort no open flame could achieve. But then came the second twist, the buried tank didn't he just heat the cabin at night. It smoothed temperature swings over entire days, meaning that even if Elias didn't tea burn a fire until evening, his cabin stayed warmer during daylight than others. Cabins did because his system didn't tea rely on bursts of flame it relied on stored heat that never fully dissipated. When word spread people asked to see the tank but Elias refused not because he wanted to hide it but because digging into the earth midwinter would ruin the whole system. 
so instead he drew diagrams showing how the tank acted like a giant rechargeable battery charging during the early evening, fire and discharging through the night and into the morning and the more he explained, the more even skeptical homesteaders realized that what he debuilt wasn't tea fantasy it was simple engineering. Then came the third twist, during a brutal cold snap, when temperatures dropped to negative numbers and several cabins lost heat completely. Elias used his tank to warm a neighbor's home by routing a temporary pipe through the floorboards, and unbelievably, the warm water from his system raised the neighbor's cabin temperature by nearly 20 degrees Fahrenheit without a single extra log being burned, proving that his buried tank held far more heat than anyone had imagined. And that night, the mocking turned into curiosity, curiosity turned into admiration, and admiration turned into imitation. Because once people understood that a few hours of fire could create 12 to 14 hours of warmth, they knew Elias had done something revolutionary, something sustainable, something frontier practical in a way no expensive stove upgrade ever could. When spring came, several homesteaders attempted to copy Elias's design, but most of them failed at first, because they tried using smaller tanks, shallower pits, or pipes made from softer metals, and each shortcut weakened the entire system. Proving that the genius of Elias's creation wasn't just the idea itself, but the scale of the thermal mass and the depth of the installation, both of which determined how long the heat would last once the fire went out. The earth around the tank acted as a gigantic thermal sponge, absorbing excess heat and releasing it slowly back upward. And while many settlers believed insulation meant only one thing keeping heat inside a house Elias understood that insulation in the ground worked differently. It didn't need to trap all the heat, only slow its escape, so the cabin could remain comfortable through the darkest, coldest hours. As the next winter approached, three families successfully replicated his system and all three reported the same astonishing result. No more freezing mornings, no more waking up every few hours to feed the stove, no more rooms that were warm on one side, and icy on the other because for the first time their cabins had something resembling central heating the kind that delivered steady comfort instead. A bursts of heat followed by hours of cold, but the biggest twist didn't tea come from winter it came from an engineer who visited from the nearest town, a man who worked with hydronic boilers, and when he inspected Elias's system he admitted almost reluctantly that the buried tank heater wasn't primitive at all, in fact it was a simplified version of systems used in industrial settings where steady temperature control was crucial meaning. Elias, a lone mountain engineer, had independently recreated technology used by modern facilities, proving that frontier practicality and scientific understanding were not opposites but partners. By the end of that winter, Elias's cabin had become a quiet legend, a proof of concept built with only hand tools, scrap steel, and a mind that refused to accept the nightly misery of cold. And though some settlers still preferred the traditional wood stove roar, many admitted that nothing matched the comfort of a cabin warmed not by flames but by stored heat rising silently through the floorboards long after the fire. S. Last Ember had faded, and the final twist, the one that sealed Ilias's place in frontier lore, came ten years later when a wildfire swept through the forest, destroying dozens of structures. But when the cabins were rebuilt, several settlers insisted on burying their new heating tanks immediately, because they remembered a simple truth Elias had taught them. A system that relies on thermal storage is harder to disrupt, easier to maintain, and more reliable than any stove, because the earth protects it, shields it, and holds its warmth like a vault. In the end, Elias didn't just build a heater. He built a legacy, one that turned cold nights into warm ones, one that showed how a cabin could remain 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer long after flames died, and one that proved the most powerful heating systems aren't always the loudest, brightest, or biggest they're the ones quietly doing their work beneath your feet, hidden from view, simple, effective, and unstoppable.